never seen it. I have to watch the credits. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the okay, premiere. One moment so you can enjoy. Everything looks awesome. Okay. Looking so to you. Happy birthday to you. It's finally in public domain. So I have made a lot of music films over the, over the years. My first professional film was about a small community orchestra, and it, it was a film that actually got nominated for an Oscar, which encouraged me to make more and more music films in my company with my partners who like making music films as well. And so I made films on Maurice Ravel and the Spanish composers Manuel de Falla and Joaquin Rodrigo and also about Arnold Schoenberg, like German films and, um, and, and on um, Dmitry Shostakovich and his fights against Stalin. It was very political. Another one on Hans Eisler, a German composer, which also was very political. And then on Kurt Weill and um, oh, I, I, I made quite a lot of, of, of music films. and. Um, Beethoven, he's fairly well known, and Mozart. <laughs> there hasn't been huge amounts of curse in my films, and the, the Devil's Horn is about the history and the curse of the saxophone, and and it's sort of being playful a little bit, but it, it, you know you start to believe it. I, I, it's funny, I had a list in front of me, I didn't use it, but oh, that's not it. <laughs> Where's the list? Here's the list. Um, I, I just started listing, you know, the different saxophonists who've had terrible lives, and all the ones in yellow are the ones who had really cursed lives. So Sidney Bechet was in a gunfight in, in a Parisian jail, and he was the first, and, and Adrian Rolini was an important saxophonist who, who had mercury poison, and he had to have his feet severed, and Coleman Hawkins died last five years of his life. He stopped eating, he was just drinking, and... And uh, but you know like famous Chewberry and yes and Lester Young and 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 Charlie Parker of course I mean a lot of them were drug related some of them were murder related um, Wardell Gray was was killed um, and it turns out Sonny Stitt another very famous saxophonist he was the one the one that owed these people money for his drug habit and they meant to kill him but they killed the other guy. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's so many John Coltrane, Stan Getz spent more time in prison than he spent playing. And his music is so sweet, and yet his life is so tormented. And uh, there's a lot of people like that. I just have pages of. And I met somebody who was very old who worked with most of these people. And when he saw this list, I showed it to him. He, he started to cry, and he said, because he thought at first, no, it's not true. All the instruments have problems. Uh, the you know Miles Davis with the trumpet and there's many, but then he looked at this list and he went, yeah, there is something about the saxophone. There's something of, it's 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 vulnerable. It's like the human voice. Singers, like um, there you know a lot of, of singers had tragic lives too, um, and um, this is this is like just as exposed when you play the saxophone. Every saxophone is, sounds different from from the others once you know the sound of the saxophone. And, and there's a certain tragedy uh, about it at times. And that's not normal. I mean, saxophone is just a very beautiful instrument. You know, people love it. When there's a jazz ensemble, uh, for me, and I think for a lot of people, their eye tends to go to the saxophone. Maybe the bass, too. Maybe, But, but because the saxophone feels like it is jazz, it feels like the soul of jazz, it feels like it's the symbol of jazz, so you tend to, to look at it. Where about that? I'm assuming. The question is, where did the title? Oh, uh, business ethics, you mean? Or Devil's Horn? Devil's Horn. Oh, Devil's Horn. Um, Devil's Horn? Oh, well, I'm a Satanist. And I, <laughs> <laughs> no, Victoria. No, no it's actually, a, it actually is a book. There was a book called The Devil's Horn. And uh, I, just, I just love that title. And, and um, the book points towards the idea of a curse. And, 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 um, and I just wanted to keep playing with that. Um, I started getting cold feet at one point because I realized these are real human beings, that the, the premise is kind of tongue in cheek. That's what I was referring to at the very beginning, like the ethics of a film like this, I don't know. Um, and, and then, but the editor, David New, sort of like 
took a hold of it and he started, he said, well, if we had narration like this and blah, blah. And he started, the editor started doing the writing. And so he gets a big writing credit in the film. And, and, and I, as I was going, oh, I don't know, I don't. Because I was imagining showing this film to the people who are uh, in the film. But I was also imagining showing to any saxophonist and saying, you're damned for doing this. <laughs> and it's true, because I, I bought this saxophone and I started taking some lessons. My life fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> Because the saxophone was invented by a man who didn't know jazz, he invented it at, you know, 80 years before there was jazz, and he imagined it as a classical instrument, and he made friends with Hector Berlioz and different composers who, who believed in the and Rosini, people who believed in the saxophone but didn't really use it. Uh, eventually, Claude Debussy wrote a beautiful saxophone fanta fantasy, but, it, but, but Debussy himself hated the saxophone. Maurice Ravel loved it, and he used it in Bolero, and he used it in uh, pictures at an exhibition, and, and, um, but he loved jazz, and he was later than Debussy a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so, so, you know, it was first started, they started using it in military bands, and it did very well, so well that, that some of the other military uh, I mean, some of the other brass instrument makers wanted to kill, actually to kill, to assassinate Otto Sax, you know, because they couldn't copy the sound of this instrument. They didn't know what this instrument was that he invented. They couldn't do it. They, they would have just stolen his design, but they couldn't figure out how did he make the sound. So they decided instead to kill him. So they tried to assassinate him. They put a bomb under his bed. Uh, assassin tried to stab him and killed his assistant instead. And this is part of the curse of of, of, of sex. I've shown a lot of my films in the Victoria Film Festival. A lot of my premieres I've, I've, I've had at Victoria Film Festival. I, I find that the, um, you know, it's not a big international festival, but it feels like it is because the audience is very warm and very receptive and smart. And if they don't love something, you kind of know it. And if they do, you know it too. And, and I've been very lucky here. I think I've had six, seven, or even eight of my films I've premiered here. And, and yet, you know, because it's not a big festival, then I'll show the film at, at uh, Hot Docs in Toronto and they'll say, oh, we're having the world premiere because we're a big, recognized festival. And it's, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I just find it's, it's also a nice break when Toronto's very cold to come to Victoria, which is warmer in, in the winter, but that's not why. It's, it's really just, yeah, it's very intelligent, warm, discerning audiences who uh, happen to have, for the most part, like my films, so there's reinforcement. The worst time, the worst thing I ever did to this city, though, was I showed a film on, on Mozart's 250th uh, birthday. Let me think, is that right? Yes, 250th birthday. So they put on, on a cake 250 candles, and it caused the fire alarm in the theater to go off, and they had to, everyone had to leave the theater. <laughs> The festivals themselves don't really generate money, but they generate interest. And, f and for me personally, because this is the first time I've ever shown the film, and because I think the response was a good one, it gives me some inspiration to push the film. I keep telling people how bad the film is, but tonight I started thinking it's not as bad as I think. So, um, <laughs> so I, I will try to it give me inspiration to go to more festivals and maybe someone will pick it up. I have, with some of my films in the past, I have been at festivals where a distributor saw a film I made and said, I want to distribute that film because they saw the audience response.